we welcome you to Seville Weekly Ballpark for tonight's game between the Winchester Royals and your Charlottesville Tom Sox. Having these nice young men come into our area, represent their own school as well, and get to enjoy what we love here, which is you know Charlottesville and the family community and uh, all that we have to offer here, it's kind of nice to show off to them. From day one, I felt welcome, got to know some of the guys, and within a week, I felt like I've been here all summer. Take me out to the ball game. Today, we're going to learn about a group that provides our community with a high quality collegiate summer baseball team, an exciting fan experience, and an opportunity for youth to grow in the game and in character. Join us as we catch up with the Charlottesville Tom Sox. Come on. Jeff, what inspired you to start a Charlottesville baseball team? This Valley League has always had an allure to me, so I didn't know whether we'd start a minor league professional team at some point in time or a Valley League team, but just talking with some baseball fanatic friends of mine back in 2013, I think it was originally, we just decided that this would be a, a fun venture if we could do it right. So we spent a lot of time trying to make it right. Well, and talk a little bit about your your history to baseball. I mean, each of you clearly have history with yeah. baseball. So, Corey, yeah, you tell yeah. us. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I grew up in the Charlottesville area. I, I played Little League in Charlottesville, played Babe Ruth League, played high school, played college, uh, fortunately, right down the road. And so, you know, baseball started for me very young, and, you know, this is another amazing opportunity that Jeff and, and his team has been able to provide for these players here to be able to come here this summers and and get their work in. It's just been an amazing opportunity. Did you grow up playing ball too? I did and I kind of all over the state of Virginia and I came to Charlottesville to play at UVA as well. Back during a time when UVA was a very different product than the one that Corey, Corey <laughs> played in um, just, uh. just in the last 10 years. So, um, so I had a connection to Charlottesville and this community and again being you know pl playing and then coaching kind of at all levels including high school in the last few years. And uh, it just seemed like the natural progression to do this, do it right with a bunch of guys who love the game. Charlottesville doesn't have that many things going on in the summer either, you know? So we, we were really filling some, some blank space, if you will. So when, let's talk about what it is. So what yeah. is the Valley League and, and who makes up these teams? Yeah, well, you wanna go? Go ahead, go All ahead. right, so uh, the Valley League is kind of the oldest wood bat league in the country. It's been around forever. The Shenandoah Valley is the main footprint. We're the one team, I guess, that's outside of the Shenandoah Valley. And so there's no requirement that you be in the Shenandoah Valley, but you've got to get to all the other sites right, to play. Right, right. So there are 11 teams. The northernmost team is uh, Winchester, who we're playing today. It's a wood bat college summer league. Kids come from all over the country to play for us. All right, Tom Sox fans, let's play ball. You know, for anybody else that's thinking about playing in the Valley League, Charlottesville is the place to be. Just our games, the fans we get here, the events they've got going on between innings. Just baseball, how it should be, like when from your younger just coming out, playing a game that you know and love and just having fun. Tonight, I'll be mascotting. In between innings, there are games like Chuck a Cluck and the mascot race and cleaning off first base with a giant toothbrush. This is something that literally hasn't been done anywhere is to create a mascot internship program. Um, kids that want to learn or are interested in how to perform as a professional mascot. All right, congrats, Jay. So, Corey, talk about some of the benefits to being a player and having an opportunity to play. There are benefits as far as internships. Absolutely. Yeah, so Charlottesville is an amazing place for these guys to be able to have the opportunity to come and play. Not only will they get their bats, their innings on the mound, um, their repetitions, pre-game batting practice, all these things that they need to work on baseball-wise, but they're also going to get the opportunities to do an internship, to have a job, to, to go out in the community in Charlottesville and further their resumes while they're here. So it's not just baseball that some of these guys are doing. Right. And that's the beauty of what these guys have been able to set up and, and get going here. And it's really, you know, it's really paid off for a lot of these players, not only in baseball, but also in their life and their professions outside of baseball. I think why you come to a place like Charlottesville, why you play summer baseball, really, because you want to take it to the next level. You think you're good enough to play professionally. so. That's definitely, I guess, kind of the overarching goal. The opportunity presents itself to play the next level. I'll definitely take advantage of it, but that's 
partially why I'm at Wake Forest, just for the education to set myself up career beyond baseball. And also why I'm here getting the work experience while playing baseball as well. One other thing that the kids will do is either internship or volunteer. So they spend a lot of time out of the house because they have to go to the hospital to see kids or they have to go do a job somewhere or work at the Boys and Girls Club. You say they're playing with wooden bats. Yeah. There are scouts that want to see them do that, right? They don't right. do that in college they, ball, right? They don't do that in college ball. And so we do get scouts here, especially when we have players that they want to see. They'll come all the way across the country if they think that they have a draftable product. So we spend a fair amount of time evaluating these guys and get that information out to Major League Scouts so that we can draw them in here. So hopefully these guys will get drafted one day. And with that wooden bat in their hand, these guys are building a resume. And um, yeah. that's what we all need, right? When we're starting a job uh, or, or auditioning for a job, this is an audition for them in a lot of ways. Yeah, and so if someone's not getting a lot of time to play at college, this is an opportunity. Yeah. They can do that? Yeah, so there's there's multiple reasons. Let's say uh, you know, you're a star player for your, your college team, but you only play 60 games in a season. Well, we play 42 games in the regular season, so it allows you to play at least 100 games and to get a taste and understanding of what professional baseball will be like if that's in your future. And so it will benefit those guys that didn't get many opportunities and those other ones that have also gotten opportunities. So the 42 games in the summer is, is it's an amazing opportunity for, for anybody in between that has played a lot or, or lack thereof. So, yeah. And we probably want to make this clear too, like our goal is to be the best in the country as far as a baseball program in the country. It's been a phenomenal year, but what we want is the best host family experience and the best internship experience and the best coach and the best playing surface. And we want all these things to be great. So some level, we're looking for the best of the best to come right. here. We, we have, as Corey mentioned earlier, we've got so many competitive advantages in this community. Right. We have the opportunity to be selective and frankly give them opportunities that not everybody has. And in Charlottesville, you play here at CHS. Yes. And so talk about why you play here. One of the things that our committee decided was we want baseball as a whole in Charlottesville to be elevated by our experience, much in the same way that UVA has elevated because they've gotten to the national stage in a way that Corey experienced, but I, I didn't. Um, and so we thought by playing in the most urban of high schools in Charlottesville, we may help the urban community in Charlottesville, which is historically not a baseball rabid community. So by coming here, we just thought this is, has a great community, community benefit playing in this particular place. And by the way, and inspiring 90, more people to play. Yeah, and 95% of these teams, and there's like 300 of these teams across the country, they play on high school fields. High school fields, maybe that where you know we built a press box and right. we, we built a, a hitting facility. Right. Maybe others are doing that too, but in some cases you go in and it is just a stripped down high school field so that guys can go out there and get their reps. Batting for your Tom Sox, second baseman, number 19, Tyree Blaylock. I think I love baseball because it teaches more lessons, I believe, than any other game. You fail so much more than you succeed. And each play, it's you against the pitcher, you against the batted ball, so there's a lot of individual in it, but it's also you got to rally for your team and be part of a collective. So everybody's playing a high level of baseball. Everybody's had a lot of success, you know, in their school seasons, and you can really see that success carrying over to our summer season as well. So you're the manager. Yes, ma'am. What do you do? The, the team's doing really well. Is that because of you? You know, you know, <laughs> Jeff asked me, you know, do you do you want a certain type of player do you want this type of team I told him to give me a team and he has absolutely done that his him and his crew have absolutely gone out and got the best kids the best ball players the best personalities uh, amazing group of young men me as the head coach my job is incredibly easy because of what they do and what they've done and that is basically put a lineup let them go play, maybe coach them a thing or two each game, teach them something, a thing or two each game, and then just let them play the game. And they have absolutely taken that role and, and run with it. Let me brag on him just a little <laughs> bit, okay? I heard a player say the other day, he is the absolute best coach he's ever played for. This particular kid goes to a phenomenal college program, right? So, yeah. so for him to have the opportunity to come in here and play for Coach Hunt, um, it is a year-round process to get these guys here. We have about half of our roster picked for next summer already. Oh, wow. And 
a lot of the kids that are on here, this year's team, we, we hope to have back next year. That is what you want every year, is to have so many success stories that this is the, the place they, they want to come back to. So it's for him that they're coming back, to play in the culture that he's created around that field. Yeah. So, and and so. you were talking earlier, they have great host family. Oh. So, so when the guys right. come, they stay in the community. They do. They do. Do you want to speak to that? I mean, you've, you've done this recently. You know, the, the community uh, itself has embraced the entire team. And, and with that comes finding host families and people that want to house these players during the summer because they're traveling anywhere between 50 miles, 2 miles, and 600 miles yeah. to get here. And these families have taken some of these players in to house them during the summer basically as one of their own kids. Yeah. And that just shows you, you know, the amazing people that are here within the community to open up their homes to house these players for a few months to help them get better and to help them save money over the summer so they don't have to pay for an apartment or right. they don't have to go somewhere right. and spend all this money. So you know they it, don't get paid to play. Correct. Like they no. pay to play. They actually. Pay. Okay. Um, and, and let me say, I mean the the host families, we, we spend as much time recruiting the host families as we do the players. Because yeah. that is their family when they're here. And so when I go to a, a head coach at the University of Florida and say, your kid will be well taken care of here, that means when he gets hurt in the eighth inning at 11 o'clock and he's got to get rushed to the EVA hospital to have an x-ray, you're probably taking him. So you might think you're entering into a relationship with a college baseball player to influence your 12-year-old that lives under the same roof. And that will happen. But you're also signing up to feed these kids some, right. to take them to the emergency room, to give them a hug when the day uh, is not going well, and frankly, yeah. to pat them on the back and say, get on with it when, when they need to be encouraged to, to just go out and play again. You know, yeah. So these host families are, we call them kind of the, the backbone of what we're doing. I mean, it, without them, this does not exist. It's been nothing but positives for us. And as long as you can keep mac and cheese and sausage and eggs in the house, you'll be perfectly fine. It's really great having like another family away from your other family that basically feels like home from day one. Ford, I can't go anywhere. If I'm wearing a Tom Sox shirt in Charlottesville, there's somebody coming up to me saying, you know, I was at your game, like, oh, you play for the Tom Sox. You know, it's it's a big deal here in Charlottesville and it's it's been a lot of fun. I've I've really enjoyed being here. For your Tom Sox in the sixth, there were no runs, one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base after six full innings of play. The score remains Winchester three. Your Tom Sox three.